How are all animals treated that are raised for food and why is this accepted as normal? You know, um, I wouldn't say all, but I would say 90% of animals are raised in what we call concentrated animal feeding operations. And concentrated animal feeding operations um, are not the same for all animals, but if you take pigs for an example, um, they're, they're sort of warehoused in these buildings where the pigs have these little stalls that, um, that are so small that they can't really lie down or turn around. Um, and they're kept, you know, pigs are, are considered to be a, a little more intelligent than dogs, uh, somewhere around a three to five year old child and dogs are rated at about a two and a half year old child, I think on average. Um, but, but these animals are, are would li live about 12 to 15 years, sort of a similar sort of lifespan as what a dog would have. And uh, they are uh, at a very early age, um, their tails are docked, their ears are docked, their genitals are cut off um, because they literally are trying to keep them from going insane when they're confined in these uh, conditions and, you know, biting one another's tails because there'd be a pig right in front and right behind them. Uh, these animals have, um, have the sensitivity of smelling that's probably about 200 times stronger than a human. And the stench in these factories is so, so powerful that, that we need gas masks to go in. Um, and uh, it's the dust and dander and everything else is just beyond belief in these places. And, um, and these animals that would live uh, 12 to 15 years are killed after about six months. They're just stuffed with food, uh, kept in place, stuffed with food and, uh, and then slaughtered so we can enjoy our piece of bacon or ham that in turn ends up killing us. It is absolute insanity. Uh, uh, when you think about how precious our pets are to us, our dogs are to us, these animals are every bit as sentient, if not more, than our dogs. Uh, and, and yet we do this to them and we somehow justify doing it um, because we think it's um, necessary, we think it tastes good, we, whatever our excuses. We're destroying the planet in the process and we're destroying our health in the process. There is no excuse for what we're doing. If we were some other alien, um, you know, uh, uh, civilization looking down at what human beings are doing to the animals we call food, we would be absolutely shocked. Uh, and, and, and we somehow disassociate ourselves from the goings on to get meat, you know, camouflaged in cellophane into our grocery stores. Um, it, we just, I, I just can't help but thinking that someday the human species will get to a point in our, pro, you know, progression that we will understand that this is wrong. It's morally corrupt. It's wrong. And uh, hopefully we will say no more. We don't need it. It's hurting us. It's hurting our planet. And it's hurting these animals. And it's just time that it stopped. Should we try to avoid or add salt in our diet? How big a problem is salt? What health problems does it cause? And why do some people say we need salt? Well, I wouldn't say we need to completely avoid salt, um, I, but I would say we need to moderate our intake. And, and you know, most North Americans consume on average 3,400 milligrams of sodium a day. Um, men uh, average more than 4,000 milligrams. And so women, it's a, it's a little less. Um, but what we want is probably somewhere between 12 and 2,300 milligrams a day. I would say for most adults, who in North America are overweight, at risk for, for, for chronic disease, 1500 milligrams is a really sensible target. Um, we, we actually are, we have something, um, we don't have an upper limit for sodium, but we have something called the chronic disease risk reduction for sodium. And that is 2300 milligrams a day uh, for adults. And, and what the chronic disease risk reduction means is that if you consume more than 2300 milligrams, you should reduce your intake uh, for health. 
And, uh, and so that's what's generally recommended. Uh, some people say we need salt because we do, uh, you know, we need sodium. Sodium is an essential nutrient, but it is present in natural foods. We get, you know, chomping on a piece of celery, we would get uh, sodium. So it's, you know, the problem is most people just eat too much of it and it's added to processed food. And so probably 75 to 80% of the sodium most people eat comes from processed food. So if you just did one thing and, uh, and you know, eliminate uh, sodium and processed foods, uh, your intake would be uh, very moderate and you wouldn't have to worry about adding a tiny bit of salt when you're cooking food. Uh, so that, I think that's the, the best thing people can do is just, just to get rid of the, you know, get rid of that. Now, according to the, you know, the biggest problem with sodium is it increases blood pressure and, and blood pressure increases risk of heart disease and, and, and all sorts of other diseases as well. According to the Center for Disease Control, about 60% of Americans 60 years of age and older uh, have hypertension. And about a third of those uh, people ages 40 to 59 uh, years of age. So it, it is a huge problem. And, um, and so we, we, it's easy. Most people eating plant-based, um, you know, whole food plant-based diets are, are right in the ballpark of where they need to be uh, with sodium because they're not eating processed foods. And that's just as simple as that. 